All right, hello everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Julia Schlosser. I'm a physical therapist at React Physical Therapy in Wilmette. Wilmette locate, the Wilmette location is located on Washington Avenue and Green Bay Road, just right in the heart of downtown Wilmette. React also has four other locations throughout Chicago and the North suburbs as well. Physical therapists can treat pain of many different kinds. And in Illinois, we have direct access, which means you can go to physical therapy without a doctor's note or a referral. So I definitely encourage if you, if anyone is experiencing pain of any kind, to give physical therapy a try. And unique to React, we also have free screens. So if you're not sure if physical therapy would be right for you, then you can definitely give one of our locations a call and we can get you in, you can get some advice and we can see if you might be a good candidate for physical therapy. So throughout the presentation, um, if you have any questions, I ask that you use the chat function and you can ask questions at any time throughout the presentation. I will save answering all the questions for the end, okay? But don't hesitate to use that to your advantage. And if you have a question about anything super specific, I invite you to give us a call and use that free screen option to your advantage as well. And if you miss anything as I'm talking, or if you want me to repeat anything, there will be a recording of the presentation available in 24 hours on the website, okay? So without further ado, we will just get right into our topic tonight, which is cervicalgia, which is a real pain in the neck. And the purpose of this presentation is to help improve your neck, shoulder, or upper back pain. And this is applicable to the modern day student, office worker, or anyone living in the era of technology, which is all of us right now, okay? All right, so what is cervicalgia? Well, it's just a fancy term for neck pain. So what can actually be the cause of pain in the neck? So we're gonna look at it from a physical therapy point of view, of course. So we're gonna talk about the musculoskeletal system, which involves muscles and tendons. And tendons are important because they attach muscles to bone. So if anything is injured in the muscle, we call that a muscle strain. You might think of like a hamstring strain well, that can also happen in our neck muscles. And then when you think of an injury to the tendon, we think of maybe a tendonitis issue. Ligaments, these are important because they attach bone to bone. When ligaments are injured, we call that a sprain. So you might think of a sprain as an ankle sprain. So if it's truly an ankle sprain, you're talking about the ligaments that are injured the things that attach the bones to the other bones. And then we also have a whole hoist of joints in our neck. So when we think about the neck joints, a lot of the times we'll think about the discs. So just like in your low back, in between the bones and the joints of the neck, we have the discs. So you often think about a disc as maybe um, a herniated disc or a bulging disc. The same thing that can happen in your low back can also happen in your neck. So you can have those discs that come out and they can cause local inflammation to the area, which can then, then put pressure on different um, structures, nerves, things like that, that can be causes of pain. We also have nerves. We have a ton of nerves that come out of the neck and because um, we think of in the middle of the neck, we have the spinal cord, right? That runs down the spine. All the nerves stem from the spinal cord. So we have the nerves coming out of the neck. They come down the neck under the collarbone and they come out to our arms and our fingers. So these nerves are really important because they're the ones that tell our brain to move our arms and our fingers. They allow us to grip things right they allow us to feel different sensations on our hands and things like that. So a lot is going on in the neck and any of those structures, if they're not working properly, they can be causing pain. 
Now we just focus on structures in the neck, but actually things that are injured elsewhere in the body can refer to the neck. So things like that might be a shoulder injury. So a lot of the muscles that attach to the shoulder also attach up in the neck. So a muscle that's causing some shoulder pain, that pain might also refer up into the neck region. Same with the jaw. And the jaw is really important um, because a lot of the muscles that can attach up behind the jaw are also attached to the neck. Okay, so any kind of jaw issue can cause neck pain and vice versa. And then we also have issues with the head as well. So injuries to the head that can cause a neck pain. And then um, arms as well. So we think of pain in the arm, we think, you know, maybe there's an issue in that specific location in your arm. But remember, we talked about the nerves that come out of the neck too. So sometimes if you have arm pain, it might actually be coming from your neck and there's not anything in the arm that's injured. So it's the job of physical therapists to determine what is causing the pain, what structure and where that structure is. So a physical therapist can determine or differentiate where the pain is coming from, if, if it's from your neck or it's from any of these other structures. And how many people have neck pain? Well, we know from research that 22 to 70% of people at some point in their lives are gonna be experiencing neck pain. And factors that increase the risk of getting neck pain are gonna be age, women, and being in your 40s. And I'm not quite sure why, but the only reason I can speculate is when you're in your 40s is typically when you start to see some of that degeneration happen. And the neck is one of those areas where degeneration likes to occur. We're moving our head and neck a lot. So it's a, it's a busy area in the body, just like the low back and the knees as well. Common areas for degeneration. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have pain because of that degeneration, but it's definitely something to consider as a risk factor. And then unfortunately with neck pain, we have high rates of reoccurrence and chronicity. So chronicity is chronic pain, right? Which typically means symptoms over three months. Unfortunately, when we have episodes of neck pain, they're typically lasting a long time. And even if they get better, sometimes they, they typically come back as well. So that's why we really need to um, start educating about this. So then we can reduce those rates of reoccurrence and chronicity. Other types of neck pain that's non-musculoskeletal can be concussions. So a concussion is an injury to the brain itself, and that can in turn refer to neck pain. Other things are migraine headaches. Things that cause migraine headaches happen up in the brain. That can also be causing neck pain. And then other systemic diseases as well, um, meningitis, um, God forbid, cancers, things like that that might manifest as neck pain. So are you at risk for developing neck pain? We just talked about that females have a higher risk of developing neck pain and then a prior history of neck pain will predispose you to more neck pain, um, potentially more episodes of neck pain in the future. So um, this is taken from two high level studies that um, indicate that these two factors are the highest and most consistent risk factors for developing new onset neck pain. We also know that older age, higher job demands, a smoking history, low social work support, and a prior history of low back pain may also be risk factors for developing neck pain as well. And this is just a fun fact, the image on the right is a Cayenne woman. These people originate from Myanmar, but were displaced to Thailand during the Civil War in the late 20th century. And the women start wearing rings when they're five years old. They add a new coil every two years, and they can have a maximum of 30 rings, which means that the whole process can take up to 60 years to complete. Okay, so it wouldn't be a talk from me if I didn't talk about the global burden of disease, right? So the global burden of neck pain. So the global burden of disease is a concept developed in the 1990s by the Harvard School of Public Health, the World Bank, and the World Health Organization to describe death and loss of health due to diseases, injuries, risk factors for the entire world. So they summed up all the data they had thus far in 2010, 
And out of all the information they gathered, information about 291 conditions. And neck pain ranked fourth highest in terms of disability as measured by YLDs, which is years lived with disability. So pretty much neck pain was the fourth highest condition out of all of these for people who have lived with years of disability. So this is a global issue. And interestingly, in 2017, it was the leading cause of disability burden in China. The reason I bring this up is because the gathering of all this health data can translate to meaningful health policy. And how many times, you know, were we told growing up, sit up straight, have good posture, probably by our parents, right? But we're never, excuse me, we're never truly taught what good posture is, how to support good posture, and how to maintain good posture. So it's really important stuff that we're gonna go over today. And we'll, we'll get into it right now. All right, so posture. First thing we're gonna talk about is a forward head posture. It's known in the research that forward head posture is correlated with neck pain in adults. So if you're wondering if you have a forward head, this is something you can try at home. It's called the occiput to wall test. Occiput is a fancy term for the head. So just like in the picture, you're gonna stand with your heels against the wall and your eye gaze is gonna be looking straight ahead, okay? It's gonna be cheating if you're looking up like this. So you wanna fix your eyes on something straight ahead and stand up tall and you wanna see if the back of your head can touch the wall. If the back of your head is less than one centimeter away from the wall, you're good. If it's greater than one centimeter away from the wall, as you can see in the picture on the right or the, the woman standing on the right side, then you would be considered to have a forward head, okay? So we know that adults with neck pain showed increased forward head when compared to adults without neck pain. And we know that it's um, significantly correlated. So this stuff is known in the research, okay? So try this at home, have um, a friend, a partner, spouse, take a picture of you from this angle and see um, what your head position is. All right, so it's no wonder we have a forward head, right? We're on the computer where um, many people are working from home. I think we're all on our cell phones, right? And we're always looking down at these things. So this is a big contributor to neck pain in this day and age. All right, let's get into how to fix forward head, okay? So first we're gonna talk about differentiating the upper neck <clears throat> and the lower neck. Now this image is gonna be taken from a side view looking onto someone's neck. The pointy things that stick out on the bones, that's gonna be the very back of your neck. And the upper neck is considered the first three, sometimes two to three bones and joints in the neck here. Okay, the lower neck is going to be the rest of the neck. And it's important to differentiate this because when we're talking about a forward head, okay, so when we're talking about a forward head, we're talking about ears over our shoulders like this, which means our lower neck is going to be flexed forward. Flexion is forward. Okay, so our ears are forward like this, and then if we're walking around like this all day, right? We're just gonna be looking at the ground. So in order to compensate for that, what our upper neck does is, if flexion is forward, our upper neck extends up like this, okay? So I'm obviously exaggerating that posture. Some people don't have it as bad. Some people, you can really see their head falling forward. Okay, so lower neck flexed forward, upper neck extended back. That's how our, our body naturally compensates for that forward head position. So what's gonna be really important is to isolate that upper neck 
and reverse that posture. That's what we want to do. Okay. So how do we do that? We do that by upper cervical nodding or upper cervical flexion. Okay. So these are just some images to um, get you a visual on nodding, which is what we want to see on the left. Now, what people commonly do or what I commonly see when I'm teaching this in the clinic is people actually do retraction. Okay, so the difference between those two motions, okay, so the neck is going to be forward, upper neck um, tipped back like this, upper neck extended, okay, so what I typically see people do is this motion, right, so that's going to be retraction, okay, that's the turtle going into its shell, another way you can think about it is if someone is coming in to try and kiss you and you don't want to be kissed then, Okay, you're gonna pull the whole head back like this. You're gonna get some double chins, okay? So what I want you to try is bring your ears over your shoulders like this, and all you're gonna do is nod your chin down, okay? So a way to help differentiate these movements is that upper neck, that upper cervical, and I'm using cervical and neck interchangeably. They mean the same thing, okay? That upper neck nodding down, is going to be what we want to see and what the pot, what posture we want to see you hold throughout the day, especially when you're working at your computer, you're working at your workstation, or you're looking at your phone. Okay, so we want to bring the ears over the shoulders, sit up tall, and then fix your eye gaze about you know 10, 20 feet away, something eye level, and all you're going to do is chin, tips down. Okay, so you want that chin tipping down just like this and hold it. Okay, so you can try that just sitting here now. Okay. Okay, and the reason this is so important is because a lot of neck pain can stem from these little muscles called the suboccipitals and they don't look like much, okay? This is a view of the back of the head, but these muscles, it's actually their job to do that upper neck extension, to tip that neck back, okay? So when, <clears throat> So when we're out in this forward head, right, lower neck flexed forward, upper neck tilted back like this, imagine the weight of gravity pushing your neck down like this. That's going to put a whole load or a whole, like a, a, just a ton of pressure on those suboccipitals, right? So it's not their job to hold up your head and heads are heavy, okay? We have a bowling ball sitting on our shoulders, eight to 12 pounds. And if we're just hanging on those suboccipitals out here, then after sustaining that posture for hours on end, day after day, that's gonna be a lot of tension and cause a lot of pain and irritation in those tiny muscles that aren't made to do that. So when we do that nodding, just like this, we're actually giving those suboccipitals a little bit of a break we're giving them a little bit of a stretch, okay? Another way to get at those suboccipital muscles is gonna be a self-release, okay? So um, I'll draw your attention to the top right picture. That's called a peanut massage ball, okay? These are available on Amazon for maybe $15 and um, you don't necessarily need that one. If you have two lacrosse balls or tennis balls at home, you could just tape them together or you could just use one lacrosse ball and you'll have to do both sides. But here is a video of someone laying on the massage ball, the peanut, and then doing little chin tucks. So you see she's nodding down. She's stretching out these suboccipitals. And the placement of that ball 
is going to be right on these muscles. So if you feel the back of your head, right in the back of your head, there should be this pointy thing that sticks out. Okay. That's going to be your skull. That's called the external occipital protuberance. The suboccipitals live right under that. Okay. So you just place the ball right under your skull where your head meets your neck. Okay. Usually it's pretty tender. So if it's too tender to lay down on it like this, you can always do it up against the wall. You'll just have to hold the ball in place with your hands. Sometimes you also have to hold the ball in place when you're lying down too, if you have long hair or if it's slipping. Okay. But this feels pretty good. <clears throat> Again, if it's too much pressure to do lying down, go ahead and do it on the wall. You won't have um, as much pressure, but you'll still get a good release. Okay, next we're going to talk about the deep neck flexors, okay? So this is an image of the spine, um, the neck taken from the front, and the top muscles, the top layer of muscles are removed. So we get to see the muscles that lie right on the base of the spine, okay? So we know from research, um, in 2018, there's a study that compared 12 different studies and they found that deep neck flexor training improved head and neck posture. We know that better posture means less pain, right? So in 2017, there was another study that compared nine different studies and they overall concluded that deep neck flexor training is highly effective in improving impairments with people with chronic neck pain. Okay, so this is going to be a really important component to anyone experiencing, especially that long-term, that chronic pain in the neck. So I'll show you the test that you can try at home to see where you are at endurance-wise in these muscles. So you will start lying flat, no pillow. And what he's going to do is tuck his chin. Let's see. So this is him relaxing. So he's going to tuck that chin down as, and this is going to be your maximum. So do it as hard as you can. You're going to hold that chin tuck and watch. He's going to lift his head one inch off the, the table there and then hold it. Okay, so normally, um, we'll, we'll rather what we want to see is you hold it for 30 to 50 seconds, and that's a pretty long time. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way I could do that. I haven't been practicing, okay, but with, with a little bit of practice, you can get really good at this, and the idea is that you want to hold the chin tuck the whole time. So it's really hard to tell if you're holding that chin tuck, so even, a even coming out of it a little bit is technically you have to restart the test. Okay. So some, you know, some people might be able to do five seconds. Some people might be able to do 10, 20 seconds, whatever you can manage to do, go to that time, relax, and then try it three to four times. Okay. And that's going to help strengthen these deep neck flexors, help with posture and help with pain. So this is gonna be the progression of that exercise. So if doing that is too much tension or too much pain in the neck, what, what I want you to do is stand up against the wall and practice those chin tucks. Now, if you can get your head back against the wall, then you're gonna do that or that nod rather, okay? You're gonna do the nod and you should feel your head slide up against the wall, okay? So remember the nod, the upper neck nodding, is just that really small movement that reverses, that help, helps to reverse the forward head, okay? So nodding is good. Then once you're confident doing it against the wall, you're gonna do it in sitting and you won't have the feedback of the wall behind you. So it's a good way to keep practicing that movement. And then once you get that down, you can try the chin tuck lift, like the video we just showed you. Okay, so on the flip side of that, that was the muscles on the front of the neck. This is gonna be an image of the muscles on the back of the neck. 
Okay, so this is a view taken from the back. The top muscles are again removed. All right, so show you how to do this one. Okay, so same idea. So now he's gonna be lying with his shoulders supported on um, probably the bed is the best place to do this at home, okay? So you're gonna be relaxed down like this and then you're gonna do that retraction, that chin tuck. I wanna see some chin folds, some skin folds or that double chin and you're just gonna hold it and see how long you can hold it for. <clears throat> Okay, so the idea again is that you don't wanna lose that tuck. So you see there, he just lo lost, his, lost his tuck right there, okay? So that's what you don't want to do. You don't wanna hold this position. You want to maintain the tuck the whole time, okay? So progression for this one, again, I want you to be able to do that tuck, that nod in sitting, and then you're gonna do it in on quadruped, or this is hands and knees, and then you can do it past the edge of the bed, okay? Next, we're gonna talk about rounded shoulders. This goes hand in hand with forward head posture. <clears throat> and this is definitely something that contributes to neck pain. It causes, um, it can cause some tightness in the upper back. It can cause that head to just kind of fall forward. Naturally, when we stick our head forward, we kind of want to round our shoulders as well. So let's see how to fix this. Okay, we're going to get into some exercises now. So first, most basic exercise to help reverse for our reverse rounded shoulders is gonna be a scapular squeeze or shoulder blade squeeze, okay? <clears throat> so I want you to see shoulder blades coming down and back, squeezing really hard and then relaxing. Now, when you do this, your hand should be able to stay in your lap and you should just be able to move your shoulder blades back. Okay. If you need to move your arms at first, that's okay, but I want you to be able to do it without moving, without really moving your arms too much. I just want that movement controlled by your shoulder blades. And then level up from that is going to be doing the same movement with your arms up in the air like a goal post. So next series of exercises, again, for rounded shoulders, we're gonna do pull-aparts. So for a lot of these exercise, exercises, you'll see me use the TheraBand, okay, the stretchy band. And this is a really excellent tool to have around um, many different purposes and uses for it. If you're a current patient of React, definitely just ask one of us um, if you would like one to do some of these exercises or any exercises at home. They just come in handy and I'm doing them at home so you can then see how, how to do them at home, okay? So pull apart's high, um, pretty self-explanatory here. Again, you're gonna get sick of hearing me say this, but when my arms come back like there, my shoulder blades are squeezing together. Same idea, but your arms are gonna be a little bit lower. You'll see me turn forward here. Arms are a little bit lower. They're not quite out in a T. They're almost more in like this big A position. Okay, again, shoulder blades squeezing back when my arms come back. Next, we have newspapers. So for anyone who hasn't done this exercise before, I ask that you start with your elbows tucked into your side. That's gonna provide some more stability to rotate out on those shoulders. If you watch me do it, I've done this move before, so my elbows are a little farther out from my side, which is okay. It's just a little bit 
um, harder to control that movement. Okay, so that's um, so start elbows into the side, progress elbows out a little bit, but you're still rotating, kind of almost pivoting off that elbow, squeezing the shoulder blades, keeping the shoulders themselves pulled down as well. Okay, for the next exercise, it's gonna involve using the door. So you'll see me tie the band in a knot in the middle. And it's handy to have two bands, one that you have the knot in and one that you don't. Okay, so I got my knot. And then you always wanna put it in the hinge part of your door. You can of course do this next move if you tie it around something or if you wrap the band around something solid. I didn't have anything solid to wrap it around. Um, so I tied the knot and put it in the doorway and then that thing's not going anywhere. And then you're set up for your rows. So for rows, you wanna anchor the band in the door about belly button height and you want to pull straight back. Forearms are gonna stay parallel to the floor. So the biggest issue I see teaching rows is gonna be when people pull their arm back, they're actually dropping their arm, okay? They're kind of doing this motion instead, okay? So that's not targeting the back quite as much as we want. So that way we want, or in that way we want like this, okay? Almost like you're elbow checking someone behind you in line. Okay. Next, we have lap pulls. Put it in the top of the door. Core engage slightly, and you're going to pull that band down, really emphasizing those shoulder blades coming down and in. All right, next we're gonna go over some stretches. So first we have an upper trap stretch. This is the muscle that connects to your shoulder and um, right up into the neck. It's the main muscle, you know, if you're rubbing your shoulders, that's the, the meat of the muscle that you're gonna get. A lot of the times this can be really tight as well, especially if we're working on a laptop or desktop computer. So upper trap is going to be one of the muscles that helps elevate the shoulders to the ears like this. A lot of the times this posture, you know, if we're typing or if we're doing something, um, this can definitely exasperate any kind of neck issues. It can also cause pain right on top of the shoulders, right? So it's important. That's why we emphasize pulling the shoulders down and together through these exercises, okay? And then this is just going to be a specific stretch for that muscle. So if you're stretching the right side, you're gonna put your right hand under a chair and that's gonna help anchor the shoulder down and prevent it from hiking up. And then you're gonna side bend to the opposite side and glance up to the ceiling. And you should feel that stretch all in the side of your neck. <clears throat> Along the same vein, we have a similar muscle called the levator scapula. Again, anchoring that down side bending away from that anchored arm. And then this time you're gonna look down, nose to armpit, like you're smelling your armpit. Okay, next we have a scaling stretch. So for this one, You'll see me use the palm of my hand like this. I like to go skin on skin so you won't slip. You get more grip if you're skin on skin, okay? Cupping the collarbone like this with both hands. Anchor that down. Side bend away. Tip your head back to look up in the ceiling. You might feel this one all the way up into your ear. Next, we got to stretch out that, those pecs, right? That chest muscle. This is a huge culprit in rounded shoulders. 
So there's two different ways to stretch your pecs. And if you're stretching them, you should do both of them, both of these stretches. We have the doorway stretch in the T, so in the goal post. You're gonna pick your favorite foot and you're gonna step through the doorway and you're gonna feel that stretch right across the chest area. And then we have same idea, but you're gonna slide your arms up farther in like the YMCA, the Y. Step through with your favorite foot as well. Okay, next we have some mobility exercises. So we know that mid-back mobility is a huge component of neck pain and neck mobility as well as shoulder pain. So what you're gonna do is find a towel, roll it up, and you wanna lay down on the towel. You wanna position the towel right about the level of your armpits. One inch, one or two inches above or below armpit level, it doesn't really matter. You just want it in that shoulder blade armpit region. You're going to support your head and neck with your arms, keep your hips on the ground, and arch back, feeling that stretch through the mid back. If you have a foam roller at home, you can definitely use a foam roller. It's going to be more intense of a stretch as foam rollers are bigger than a towel roll. And then we have some open books on the wall. So you'll see me kneel down, right knee on the floor, left leg up, arms start forward, rotate open, eye gaze follows that hand that's rotating for a really big stretch, and then coming back. Now, if you have any knee issues, then best to do open books lying down, which I'll show you here on the right. Head and neck supported, knees bent up, which will help lock out any low back movement. And then eye gaze will follow the top hand and you'll open up towards the ceiling. Last but not least, we have some seated rotations for the mid back. You're gonna grab your opposite ankle with your opposite hand rotate your chest open as far as you can. Repeat on the other side. Get a nice big stretch in the mid back. Okay, so I color coded these exercises for you guys. The red ones were strength and specifically for postural endurance, we want 15 to 20 reps three to four sets, okay? This can be done three to four times a week, taking rest days in between. As soon as four sets of 20 reps feels easy to you, that's when you can go up in resistance, okay? So when we're talking strength, you know, postural, postural strengthening and endurance, we're talking lower resistance because we want to be able to do lots of reps, kind of simulate holding that posture throughout the day. So for stretches, the purple ones, you want to do three sets, 20 to 30 seconds, no more, both sides. And then for the last four exercises, those mobility exercises, 10 to 20 reps each side. Here's just some pictures of the exercises um, just for reference. and some of the stretches that we went over as well. Sources, and that will be the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. So someone asks, are palms up or down on the pull aparts? I recommend doing palms up. It's gonna be more comfortable on your shoulders. If you do palms down, you might feel some like pinching uncomfortableness in the shoulders. So I would do palms up. Let's do scaling stretch. Let's repeat the scaling stretch. So I'll do it right here for you. So 
you want to cup your collarbone with the palm of your hand, okay? So you find your collarbone right here. I like to go skin on skin, okay? So you cross your hands like this, right on that collarbone. It doesn't take a lot of force to kind of pull down a little bit, okay? And then you're gonna side bend your neck away. And then you're gonna tip your head back to the wall behind you, just like this. And I feel that stretch all the way up into my ear. Okay? Just like that. <clears throat> so it's going to be this stretch she's doing in the bottom right corner here. <clears throat> okay, any more questions, comments, concerns? All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any lingering questions after we're finished. And I hope this was helpful for you.